Hi guys, this time we'll be talking about Lento model again. No, not really. Just kidding. Uh, just an update. This was there was one additional unit. Uh, after what I mentioned uh, in the previous video, there was one additional unit up for better thing. Uh, and this was a one. This is a one bader upcoming. This one is on Friday, and uh, I'm definitely of of course I'm not saying it's a good buy. Please come on. Um, look at this one beta, one point three mil for one beta. Then no, uh, nine nine year. I really had no idea. Why are uh, why do people will even consider this now? Uh? uh, but I'm pretty sure somebody will take it up. Okay, that will be the funny thing. Then and then let's applaud the new hero in town. Uh, or another way out of town, I would say. Okay, and then uh, for those of you who are wondering and you've been observing a price or you were there on the actual day, you realize that these prices are roughly about 5% uh, above the the uh, the launch day prices. So some people will naturally think, hey, I make money with 5% already. Uh, and and that, that means a very good appreciation for me. Ma. Okay, uh, I think the challenge lies in whether when it hits the resale market, can you get the your unit out? Because eventually you can have all the paper games you want, you can have two million dollar paper game, but nobody wants to buy them things from you. And then end up is you you don't realize the gains. Okay, then you can have uh paper games, but the thing is the fundamentals are not there. You can have your so-called paper games, you can even have an imaginary paper games of two million dollars, even though you buy one million dollar, but the thing is nobody's gonna realize it for you. Okay, so um for those that are really still going to go ahead. With this one, uh, good luck. I will really say good luck and pray that uh, this one is just a uh, emotional impulse buy lah. Oh, don't don't expect it to have too much. Hopefully, you just buy it because you really, really, really love to stay in that tall. And you really love to have a integrated development right underneath you. In, in which, by the way, there are many options. Uh, unless you really want brand new, I think there are still many options out there. But I have no idea why these people want to choose this. But anyway, uh, we'll see. We'll see who's the new heroes. Who are the new heroes in town, lah? And they will wish them all the best. Okay, and uh, but definitely, um, I think those people who these five of them who who eventually. Take the leap of faith and then they decide to give out their one point two five percent. I think uh kudos to them. They they definitely um hopefully by now um able to spot go better opportunities in the market, which I think they wish they there definitely are. Um just because they are not, you know, launched right in your face, launch weekend, doesn't mean that they are not not good. Because crop mentality is always clouded because People just because somebody starts running, the whole street starts running. But the thing is, nobody really know why is it running because the first guy is just jogging. But end up, everyone thinks that there's something wrong. Okay, it's definitely a crop mentality. And uh, just a sharing, we got the tannery for those of you who are not uh, not really clear, which is at Bukit Panjang, almost like an integrated development. Okay, and then uh, you've got uh, look at this. When they launched, after that, two quarters later, they went up this much. Eh? Then people were thinking, hey, 200 PSF paper gain. Wow, I really make it big already. And then within two quarters, I make 200 PSF gain. Uh, after five years, three years, five years, at that point, the SSD was about four years. So maybe after four years, wow, who knows? Maybe the the, the market would have been, I would have been able to exit at 2,000 PSF, huh? because they enter here, huh? and then since at the rate that is going up, because naturally when people buy already, uh, they become optimistic. Before people buy, they become pessimistic. But once they buy already, they suddenly become the most optim optimistic of the bunch, which is not good because you have to be realistic. The most important thing is you have to be realistic, you have to be objective. Before you buy, and after you buy, you have to be really clear why you want to buy, what, what is the exit plan that you have? Is your exit plan even viable? Or not? And look at these guys over here. They bought here, and then they went up. Uh, hopefully, this guy is still staying happily ever after. Uh, let's hope he doesn't have to exit. And then let's see. Uh, the one they got really, really first hand. Uh, on the launch day, maybe they made some money. But from what we know, Henry didn't really make money. Okay, for for other reasons. Uh, which I'm not gonna share here today. Okay, if you are interested, then you just pay me, and then I'll share with you. Okay, so this is just an example of why uh, just because you have paper gains at the start doesn't mean that when it hits the resale market, it's going to be the same because you have to observe the fundamentals. Example, is your, is your, are you buying into a development that has fundamentally weaker 
uh, foundations compared to other, I'm not talking about physical foundation, I'm talking about characteristics uh, compared to other developments in the area. Are you at a disadvantage? Okay, then let's move on. Uh, today's focus will be on Hugh House, which um, I think is going to launch this weekend. And uh, just a quick one, I'm going to be sharing too much today. I think um, this one is still quite a small development. Um, but I'm just going for those people who have been texting me, asking me, oh, you know, how what do you think about Hugh House? Uh, there's quite a lot of hype. You know, CCR now is undervalued here and there. CCR is undervalued generally as a whole. But the problem is, uh, it's not just as simple as, you know, CCR, RCR, OCR thing. Because ultimately, this label, OCR, CCR, CC, um, OCR, RCR, CCR, only came out in the past few years. It's not really like existent. Just because somebody label it and you realize that the way they label it is, okay, maybe this part is CCR, this part is CCR. Then this funny part is RCR. It's not even like a complete circle RCR or something. So it's the way they, they, they created this this so called boundary, but does it does the label actually affect your profitability? Uh, profitability, definitely not. Uh, so to me, it doesn't really matter whether it's a CCR or CR. To me, it really the what really matters is the fundamentals of the property. Okay. As usual, disclaimer whatever I share today, just based on my point of view and research. So make sure you do due diligence and consult and seek professional help before you make any leap of faith. Hugh House, you've got uh this one is just a very basic of the uh, of the layout here. And there you've got one row of a uh, small three bedder over here, and then you've got a whole bunch of two bedders, and then a whole large bunch of one bedder, and pretty much that's it. You can see the facilities. Now, not too a uh, I wouldn't say it's too excessive or luxurious. Maybe about this one is probably about 20, 30 meters full. And then let's see. Um, surprisingly, maintenance fee is not that expensive compared for a small development because you got the uh, not many units sharing the cost. You only got seventy two units, but this one is comparable to small uh, OCR. Yeah. But when it comes to maintenance fee, I really don't think that um, uh, Hugh House has uh too much of a problem. Uh, you've got uh quite a lot of the percentage, almost ninety percent. They are of a uh, one to two beta, so you are expecting quite a lot of rental. If you are buying for rental play purely only, you think you can go ahead and just buy for rental. Um, but if you are buying to to make uh capital gains, which which is usually should be the case, if you want to make money in Singapore because of the so much taxes and the uh, interest are uh, property tax are uh, maintenance fee uh, all these causes involved. Uh, you want to play the long rental route. Um, I think I've gone through quite a few times really. It's, not really advisable to me because I feel money can easily be this kind of money can easily be made elsewhere to this market. Okay? And why go through all this trouble to to go for gains that can easily almost be risk free and yet still reach reap the same amount of returns. And it just doesn't actually make sense to me. And by the way, this one is a triple nine. Um, this is a triple nine development, even though it's so it's so called leasehold, but the characteristics is almost like a freehold. So there's no, uh, worries about uh the land lease. Uh, expected TOB is about two or two six, but maybe earlier because this one is still after all a small development. They, they, I don't think they're gonna take quite a lot of time. Uh. Show flat wise, I think standard lah. Usually most of the CCR show flats are quite nice. So so I'm not gonna comment too much about that. You got some schools in the area, so for those Kiasu parents, please uh feel free um to take a pick. And uh yeah, I'm not gonna touch on that. So uh one thing I'm gonna to share today um is more of the okay, apologies, I didn't add in. Hey, let's see. Okay, yeah, you've got uh this. Okay, you've got quite a few competitors in the area for Hill House. I think, uh, in terms of in, when it comes to supply, uh, I'm not gonna add them up. I think this one is straight away. It's a very straightforward, clear cut that there's quite a lot of supply in the area. You've got quite a lot of competitors in the area that are almost similar or easily superior in terms of fundamentals. Um, so definitely, I think when it comes to supply, when it comes to characteristics wise. Development characteristics in the Hugh House is definitely at a disadvantage. And then we pick up five um competitors or rather comparables, comparable competitors, uh, that are that do not have a lease problem. Okay, there are some 99 in the areas, uh, but we are focusing on those that do not actually have a lease problem, so as to be fair, we got one that is uh almost similar, totally similar to 
uh, the Hill uh, House triple nine. Then you got four others. They are freehold, and then uh, I chose to pick those that are newer in the area because they tend to reflect a more relevant trend. Those that are too old already are because they are very cheap. So they end up showing a very skewed data. Whereas you have some, those that are newer, they tend to show you a very, very different chart. Okay. And let's see this how this five form. You've got uh, Oxley Edge, the first one, the blue one, the one in blue, overall trend, imagine holding since 2013 and today you are actually losing money. So all your so-called rental gains, imagine now of your net, 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 net. Uh, maybe you're making net, net after all these causes every month. Uh. 500 to 1,005 and then which means a total of uh, 10, 20k, 20k a, a year and then you, you are facing a loss of 200 PSF. So 200, let's say you got a, maybe a 500 or 600 square feet unit, you are easily looking at a, a $120,000 loss. Then will that will your so-called rental gains that you, that you see the money coming in but you but this capital gain, capital loss actually kind of offset. So actually you're doing all this for nothing. Is actually is it actually worth or not? Okay, unless you're telling me you want to you're staying in the area forever, like, then you are staying there, you're enjoying the location, then by by all means go ahead and enjoy uh, all you want. You've got a uh, RP point, the one in light blue, still going on a downtrend. You've got Starlight Suites going on quite a severe downtrend. Uh Devonshire residences also, the one in yellow. And lastly, you got uh the one in purple. I think this is the worst overtake. As you can see, these comparables they are the most the newest and most relevant. Do not seem to be uh on a very um optimistic trend la, in the past ten years. La. And uh from what we know, Steel House is gonna be launching about 3,000 PSM and above, which place you around here. That means you're gonna be a new champion for those of you who are considering it. Uh, so if you are considering in terms of investment, you want to make money, your whole objective is to make money. Uh, sorry to say, I don't think this is the right product for you. But definitely, if you really like the location because you like the prestige or River Valley or here and there, then by all means, go ahead and jump. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the numbers. You've got uh, Oxley Edge, which is not too bad. There are people who pay money. But if you look at, if you go after the net net, buy stamp duty, agent cost, uh, agent rental over the years, uh, maintenance fee, property tax, interest, blah, blah, blah. These are definitely on a loss considering the amount of days that they hold. When you look at the annual analyze, you can easily get better returns elsewhere by keeping all your money in your way. Wow. <laughs> okay. And then you've got these guys who will definitely lost money. Then this is for Oxley Edge. You've got Starlight Streets that are uh, only two guys that Appear in the green, but definitely in the red. Uh, for reasons that I've shared earlier, you've got the champion that has lost almost or uh, more than seven hundred thousand dollars in the span of let's see, blah blah blah, eight years. Okay, so this whole bunch of guys all lost money. So imagine why would you want to put your money in somewhere that's losing money? That is something that I really don't 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 understand. Are you buying for prestige? Are you buying to show off? Is that you obviously you're buying a nice car to show off there? I get it, you're, you're, you're just buying the status symbol. But if you're buying for investment, then you really got to settle your mindset. Do you actually want to make money or do you want to buy more of a status symbol? Hey, I got something in real value because I really want to um, so-called show off to my friends or whatever reasons it is. If that's the case, then maybe this one is worth it for these people because they get a claim that you know they got a property over there. But if not, your objective is to make money. Sorry to say these guys definitely do not cut it at all. Might as well put your money in the bank even though it gains 0.05%, but it's still definitely more money than these guys over here. And, and a much less hassle. You don't have to deal with the paperwork at all. And you've got uh, Devonshire, a Devonshire Residences. Uh, all these lose money. This guy is very likely after six years, very likely in the red also. Um, but take you've got uh one guy who really make money. This is definitely a money maker. Uh, but you look at this. Uh, everyone bought in at two thousand plus thousand eight. But this guy managed to get in thousand one. So this transaction definitely looks a little bit fishy. Looks a little bit, uh, not so normal to me lah. And then you've got these two guys which are decent. Probably this guy probably made some money. This guy probably not too much money because the the size of the unit is quite big. Um. These whole guys all lost money, and that's what take. And the last one you've got RV point. Um, these guys made money, 
for sure. Uh, but how many of them are actually really net net making money? Maybe only this guy. But if you look at the time frame, how long he held on for 12 years to make this kind of money, and probably after net net, you got 30, 40k. Uh, is it really a worthy investment? How many, how much opportunity cost have you lost over the past 12 years? I think that is something you have to weigh uh, because you it's not just, um, oh, you make money. Okay, I come out 12 years out. Wow, I make money. Uh, okay, I'm a champion already. You have to weigh uh, how much opportunity have you cost, have you lost over the 12 years? How many boats have you missed already just because you choose to stay on your boat which is not moving? But how many cruise ships that actually should cruise past? Okay, that is uh definitely something for you to think about. So for those of you still looking around and hoping that you know you don't go to a show flat, tell me which show flat is not nice. I mean, I know right. My problem is everyone, wow, I go to a show flat, I make a decision to 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 buy because uh because it feels good, you know, I can connect with the show flat. I mean, oh, yeah, this is basically you at the show flat and then Eventually, when you get the keys, you realize everything is a white wall, basic finishings, maybe some of you have to deal with some definitely have defects. And then you realize this is what you're getting. Um, you know, the so-called promise gain, so-called capital appreciation for all these, whatever transformation is not there. Then is it really what you're looking for? And then is that really what you're getting? Yeah, are you getting a real Pikachu or fat Pikachu? And these people, do they choose to eventually, maybe they, okay, now at least I got a house. Uh, so uh, guess what? I just hold long. I just hold and pray long. Uh, and then these are, uh, of course, the real thing, uh, please, uh, come on, guys. Australians don't marry their head in the sand to hide. Lah. I think it's quite normal. If not, they would have been extinct by now. But they, of course, this is a saying for those of you who are not, um, who don't really understand. Okay, there's a saying, that you know they, they they bury their head in the sand. Why? Because they choose to run away from the fact. And this is what some of the owners they, they choose to do. You realize that this whole all this transaction uh, is it really that few transaction that these guys are losing money? Are the rest not losing money? I'm pretty sure there are even more people that are losing money. It's just that they choose to bury their head in the sand and not realize it because they have no idea what to do. They have lost confidence in the market. Hey, my first and only investment, I I, I lose money already. I tell you what, probably market is too dangerous already. And so that's why I shouldn't be investing. Uh, it is dangerous if you anyhow just jump in. Uh, like example, if you're ostrich, you're going into alliance, then obviously you're, you're, you're going to be having that kind of expectation. But if you know your things and you go seek the right professional help, uh, then obviously this kind of thing will happen. Because if you take a look at the chart again, while the rest of Singapore has been on an uptrend, especially you look at the PPI, you've got all the new launches, you've got some of the resales also going up here and there. But these guys are still coming down. So what does it mean? Is it really a location problem? We've said it a lot of times before that it is definitely not a location problem in Singapore. But a lot of people still think, oh, you know, it's about location, it's about a feel here and there. Then, or well, the funny thing is, when they move in already three to five years down the road, they realize they have the itch again. Some people call it a seven year itch, you know, but for most people, it's even lesser itch. Less than five years, they oh, I look at other people's new house, oh, I also get, I also want to move for again. And that is something very common. They come and say, hey, TT, I always want to, uh, well, this one is going to bring my forever home. And then they realize, hey, yeah. Uh, move into a house already. Ah, uh, like example, I like, got this friend. You don't know, move into a lender already. They come and tell me, oh, okay, this is gonna be a forever home. After one two years already, ah, yeah, my kids gonna grow next time for then how? And then I think I need to downgrade there. Eh. Then, in the first place, why did you factor in all these from the start? And after you're moving, you need to spend so much money and so much effort moving already. You buy all the furniture with so much luggage behind and so much baggage. Ah, uh, so called baggage. Ah, uh, and you got telling me that you're gonna move again. So this is an example of how short-sighted most people are. I'm very good. I'm gonna tell you very frankly, and this is how most people actually are. And the worst part is when they realize they don't want to exit and they couldn't exit because they don't want to realize losses, they just realize investors when they are stuck. And most of them, I would say 50 to 80 percent, they are out of this market because they have lost faith in the market already. And this is because they allow their emotions to get the best of them. So how do you um how do you stay afloat in this market, especially when you've got things on high? Are there opportunities? There are definitely opportunities. So far, my clients, are, or rather almost all of them, other than those that are 
super emotional, which I don't really have too many. Uh, most of them are still definitely easily afloat. Are they holding on to properties uh, uh, that they may con be concerned about because of interest rates? Definitely. Because who, who is not interested, uh, concerned about interest rate now? I'm also concerned about interest rate now. I've got two properties to handle. But the problem is uh, and they are factored in that already, definitely. And uh, so they are factored in for my clients already, definitely. They are going to be facing higher interest, yes, now. But the problem is because of the fund strong fundamentals that they are getting into, um, will their future capital gains be very much more likely to cover all this interest and result in a healthy net gain? I'm very sure, definitely. Uh, if not, then there I wouldn't be coming come to this YouTube and, and then uh, and showing all these numbers over here, right? So there's always a pattern to how you can spot a profitable development. And if you allow yourself to be less um, emotional and more objective, uh, it's definitely a good chance that you're going to find strong buys. And of course, you have to also enter and exit at the right price and timing. Okay, that'll be all we have for today. And if you need any help with your property journey, then feel free to give me a call or drop me a text and I can see how I can help. See you guys. Bye-bye.